Hi, everyone. The Melbourne Thermal Chronology Research Group hosts five comprehensively equipped laboratories, and the facilities for three of them are available for hire. This is going to be a brief introduction of what resources, or should I say equipment, from these three labs are available for booking and services which we can provide for internal and external users of the TRACE platform. These include three microscopes, a laser ICPMS system, and a comprehensive sample preparation laboratory. So first, in our microscopy lab, we host a two Kalsai's Oxio Imager optical microscope workstations and the Kalsai's confocal laser scanning microscope. The Kalsai's Axio Imager optical microscopes are equipped with high frame rate, high resolution cameras, and a motor driven scanning stages that offer smooth and brilliant image acquisition with great image contrast and the resolution. Objectives from 2.5 times to 100 times with 10 times eyepieces are available, and the both transmitted and the reflected light images can be captured. An example of a beautiful apartheid grain is shown here. All the actual imagery workstations also feature TrackWorks software. This software is part of a dual software suite developed by our research group and designed for providing a convenient operating environment to control an advanced, fully motorized microscope. It offers direct control over nearly all major microscope functions, such as switching between reflected and transmitted light sources, changing between different objectives, as well as showing live views without lag when the stage is moving. In addition, camera exposure and white balance can also be adjusted here for improved image presentation. A key purpose of TrackWorks is to capture stacks of high quality digital images of grains of interest. These stack images include all key optical information available to the observer at the microscope. They're equivalent to a digital replica of the mineral grains and they can be archived to a hard drive for later access and image analysis. FastTracks is another software package developed by our team that can operate as an offline virtual microscope. The stack images captured by TrackWorks can be viewed and analyzed in a similar way to a real microscope. Another very convenient feature that is commonly used by our visitors is the built-in mosaic function. Users can generate maps over a large area of their samples and use it as a guide map for cross-instrument analysis. This is used in tandem with a set of precise reference marks, which are added to each mount. The precise X, Y coordinates of analyzed grains can then be exported by TrackWorks and transferred to the stage systems of another instrument, such as laser ablation ICPMS or an electron microbose for convenient re-coordination. Let's move on to confocal laser scanning microscope. The main difference lies between a confocal microscope and a wide field, a more conventional microscope, such as the axial images we just introduced, is that the confocal microscope uses laser as a light source instead of white light. The reason being that, compared to a white light, the laser can be more easily focused and can provide more specific location identity than other types of light source. The other difference is in that the configurations of the microscope. There is a pinhole positioned right in front of the detector. This pinhole prevents all light sources from above and below the focal plane from reaching the detector. This out of focus information, which is considered as background noise marked as blue and the red lines here, is blocked by the confocal pinhole. In other words, the pinhole allows light from only one focal plane to be focused on the camera. In this diagram, as you can see, it is marked by the white, white line. So exactly how this micro, uh, uh, confocal microscope works? Firstly, the laser is focused on a small region of the sample and the image is captured by the camera. The mirrors sitting in the laser pass rotate and control the laser focus on the second spot. By scanning through the X 
and the Y direction, a sharp 2D image, which is known as an optical section of the focal plane. It's generated by the software that assembles all the images. And by scanning through di uh, different focal planes, several optical sections taken along the microscope's z-axis form a z-stack, which the software then converts into a 3D image with an extended depth of focus. Data recorded is used by the software to calculate intensity projections with extended depth of field intensity or height profiles, and to visualize topographic maps or 3D surface topographies of materials. This approach provides a non-destructive, and rapid, and high-resolution 3D image acquisition of inorganic materials with minimum sample preparation required. Here's an example of its application in which the figure shows the morphology of a laser ablation pit. In this example, the reconstructed 3D topography is used for evaluating the ablation behavior of a zircon and its influence on uranium lead age calculation. So in our atomic spectrometry lab, we host a new wave UP213 deep UV laser microprobe and an Agilent 7700X ICPMS spectrometer. LACPMS is a powerful analytical technology and enables precise elemental and isotopic analysis to be performed directly on solid slate samples with sub PPM detection limit. This technique has been widely applied in the geosciences for rapid spatial resolution analysis of multi element determinations for major to trace elements and the rapid bulk analysis of whole rock samples. Although it may seem complicated in the figure, the principle behind LAICPMS analysis can be simplified as follows. So when the focused laser beam with sufficient energy is directed onto a sample material, from the sample surface will be explosively spotted and evaporated. The laser introduced the sample particle will be transported in a mixture of helium and argon gas to the plasma torch and be decomposed, atomized, and eventually ionized effectively. The ions generated in the plasma are exact, um, extracted into a high vacuum region through the sampling and the skimmer cones. An ion optics behind guides the desired ions into the tractable while assured that unwanted ions such as neutral species and photons are discarded from the ion beam. And then the quadruple mass spectrometers act as a mass filter to sort ions by their mass to charge ratios. And finally, a detector counts individual ions exit the quadruple. And all elements that were selected to be analyzed were recorded as a time-resolved count data, waiting to be processed by data reduction software to obtain the final elemental concentrations. So the potential applications of LSEPMS include a chemical analysis of geological materials, pressed powders or fused material, as well as bulk analysis of metals, alloys, polymers, and ceramics. So lastly, our sample preparation resources. The purpose of sample preparation is to have a sample processed in such a way that it leads to improved analytical results compared to the initial state. We can say from our experience that this process is the key toward obtaining quality data. We offer two types of epoxies to accommodate various needs for the analysis mentioned previously. They have distinctive curing conditions. One needs to be cured at elevated temperature, hereafter referred to as hot mount epoxy, whereas the other cured at room temperature is referred to as cold mount epoxy. Hot mount epoxy is often used for making grains on glass slide mount and thin sections for petrogenesis examination, whereas cold epoxy is often used for samples of irregular shapes. 
Over the few past years, samples that have been prepared in our lab are for two main types of analysis. Firstly, for imaging, include transmitted and reflected light images, SEM. And the second purpose is for quantitative or semi-quantitative chemical analysis, including electron probe, EDS, and the LAICPMS. Some samples require an extra step before processing to polishing using the Aquatom 50s. This is a fully automatic pre-grinding and cutting machine that has 5 micron positioning accuracy. One of its primary function is to pre-grind a sample and to create a flat and horizontal surface that is parallel to the base of sample. This is extremely important for some applications, such as mineral grains on glass slide hot mount and thick section preparation. The other functions of the Acutum 50 is for precision and the ease of use cutting. The sample shown here was cut lengthwise to reveal a section for subsequent imaging and electron microprobe analysis following a CT scan. Here's another example of using the cutting wheel to slice a block uh, mounted spilithium for LICPMS analysis. Data obtained were used for reconstructing a 3D chemical models for this sample. For many applications such as electron microprobe and the fishing track dating, it is essential to have completely flat and horizontally well polished surfaces finished with one or a quarter micron diamond paste. Our polishing machines support both automatic and manual polishing mode and are equipped with various sample mover plate for sample mounted using different techniques. An example of saw-cut piece of enamel finished at 1 micron polish for laser ablation ICPMS analysis. And for SEM secondary imaging, an ultra-thin coating of an electrically conducting metal such as gold coating is necessary. This thin layer of sputter coating prevents charging of the specimen, which would otherwise occur because of the accumulation of static electric field. It also increases the amount of secondary electrons that can be detected from the surface of the specimen under SEM and therefore increases the signal to noise ratio. In conventional bright field microscope imaging, the coating can also enhance the quality and the contrast of reflected light images for minerals of very low surface reflectivity, such as apatite and the mica. And if you would like to access our sample preparation facility, please contact us first. There are several questions we must ask prior to sample preparation, particularly if you are new to the analytical method. For example, background information such as the sample size restrictions of the sampling cell and the grades of polishing required is important. Here's an example of data obtained from a poorly prepared sample. Ideally, Nearly analytical total close to 100 weight percent is considered as good electron probe data. From a sample with a poorly prepared surface, the totals are not acceptable. However, after the sample was repolished, cleaned, and recoded, analytical result of identical grains were significantly improved. So if you are interested in any of our resources, please contact us through the TRACE or iLab platform. All equipment involving sample preparation and the microscopy lab is free for all in, um, internal users. We will provide one to two hour training covering all the technical aspects required for an independent hands-on operation. One of our lab members can also provide assistance in the early stage of operation. LIC PMS analysis is considered on a case-by-case -case basis, so please contact us through email first before making a request in the LILAB system. So further information about the research we carry out can be found in our website. Please feel free to have a look and reach out if you have any questions or want to collaborate with us on any project. Thank you.